بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Just to summarize and recap where we are, we started with the intention of Tilawat of Qur'an to make a need of Hidayat Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim and then the explanation if you want Hidayat Hudallil Muttaqin that part of the Azbab of Hidayat is to be from amongst the Muttaqin and we went through the different Azbab of Taqwa and each benefit of taqwa and amongst the benefits of taqwa was walaw anna ahl al-qura amanu wa taqaw so iman and taqwa lafatahna alayhim barakatim min as-samai wal-ard that a person will be eligible for the blessings from the heavens and earth so when a person makes a niya ya Allah give me such taqwa they tell me, give me a barakah from the heavens and the earth. So even when we're making the niyat of taqwa, the benefit of taqwa and the 40 asbab of barakah that was discussed as well, which promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will draw which barakah. So hidayat, taqwa, barakah all intertwined. So a person might wonder that what intentions should I make? There are so much intentions. So we make a note of it. And then every time we start tilawat, how much time we have? If we have time for one, two, three, four, make those intentions. عِنْدَ ظَنِّي abdi b. I I am as my slave expects of me. Allah will treat us how we expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why we should be making these intentions what high hopes and intention that Allah give us this sifat and these qualities and nothing just comes like that anything that we want even in the dunya we terms sacrifice needs to be made we need to strive for it when anything comes easily, then the value is lost. Deen has come easily. Ulama, sahbat of the ulama, mashaykh has come easily. The mahal and the environment, we are here in the adhan, the masajid has come easily. So to break Allah's command is also become very easy. To disobey Allah has become easy. A person doesn't even feel the burden of guna because it has become so easy a person continues life thus obeying Allah breaking the commands of Allah flagrant violation of the awamir of Allah and a person doesn't have any grief any concern any remorse so Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah you say inna al-abd la yazalu yartakibu al-dhunub a person continues to commit guna and sin hatta tahoon alayhi wa tasq fi qalbih that thus sin becomes small, minute, insignificant he does not even consider it something grave so he says wa tilka hiya alamatul halak when a person reaches this stage this is the stage of destruction فَإِنَّ الذَّنْبَ كُلَّمَا سَوْرَ فِي عَيْنِ الْعَبْدِ Whenever you commit guna and you consider it insignificant and small عَظُمَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Then this is great in the eyes of Allah. The fact that you consider this guna small Oh it's, it's just a small guna, it's just a saghira, it's okay, it's fine. So the gravity and, and, and the greatness the magnanimity of this guna leaves the hearts of people and that's where it is destruction. We, we sign off adab from the heavens. And the last stage is where a person now slowly, slowly deteriorates and he goes into negligence and ghaflat and a person is completely oblivious of the commands of Allah. He, he has total disregard. And he plays ignorance and laxity says in. That's why ulama say al-ghafal to saratanun nafs. Negligence, this oblivion, 
is the cancer. It's the cancer of humans. And some will qalb, and it is the poison of the heart. وَجَالِبَةُ masaib. That's the time where you will draw calamities, you will draw adab. وَأَتْعَسَ sabil لِسَرِقَةِ umr And it's a means of robbing oneself of one's life and benefiting from the short life and maximizing the opportunities. And that's the death of a person. He is loving but is actually dead. Because this guna, this sin is destroying. It's like swords that are eating away at his life. It could have been beneficial and now it is harmful. That's why Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah you say, Inna dhunuba jarahat. That sons are wounds, they are injuries. Warubba jurhin waka'afi maqtalin. And certain injuries cause death. Certain injuries cause death. These gunas are injuries. How long can we continue to disobey Allah? How long can a person be contented disobeying his khaliq? Then eventually a person is far away from Allah and is not concerned of what does Allah see. What does Allah know? Allah is Basir, He's watching you. Allah is Alim, He's Sami, He's listening to every guna. So words are easy just to say, I need to do this, I need to change. But what are we doing to change? As Umar bin Abdul Aziz to say, La takum mimman yal'an Iblis. Don't be from amongst those who curse Iblis. Fil alani, outwardly we make slogans, we protest, we say in, we should be doing this. Wa yuthi'uhu fi sir, but in the darkness, in secrecy, we obey Iblis. So openly we can declare war with shaitan, but internally we are his friend. So when a person is a muttaqi, Allah loves that person. Elan is made in the heavens, proclamation. You love this person and everybody on earth will love him. But a person who contravenes Allah, then Elan is made to hate this person. The farishtas despise the person. To such an extent, Abu Dada says, in al abda la yakhlu bi ma'asiyatillah that he starts obeying, disobeying Allah so much fa yulkillahu bughdahu fi qulubi al mu'minin even the people of iman start hate, having hate for this person yeah. so taqwa the asbab of taqwa benefit number 21 it's a means of success and salvation for production it's a means of protection from difficulties and hardships in dunya and akhirah. In al aqibata lil muttaqin. In dunya and akhirah. Fasbir in al aqibata lil muttaqin. Tilka al daru al akhirah. Najaluha lil ladina la yuriduna uluan fil ardi wala fasada. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqin. That the benefits of dunya and akhirat protection in dunya and akhirah for the muttaqeen tilka uqba alladheena attaqaw that the people that have taqwa forget dunya but Allah will solve your akhirat as well walladheena attaqaw fawqahum yawm al-qiyamati so inculcating taqwa wa im minkum illa waridua everybody will pass Cross the pull sirat, the bridge over Jahannam. That's definitely going to happen. It's incumbent, the decree of Allah. Nobody can dispel the decree of Allah. Thumma nunajjil ladheena attaqaw. But Allah will save the muttaqeen. Allah will preserve the muttaqeen. Allah looks at the muttaqee. Allah protects him. Allah saves him from embarrassment. Allah saves him. 
from calamities of dunya and akhirah and Allah looks after them. Hazrat Zinnira radiallahu was a Sahabiya previously, she was a, a, a Roman lady, a non-Muslim and she accepted Islam. Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu bought her and set her free and she became blind. When she was blind, the Mushrikin told her <coughs> that the idols Lat and Uzza had made her blind because she abandoned their religion the idols had made her blind. So she refused to believe Lat and Uzza and she told them, she said, they lie. I swear by the house of Allah that Lat and Uzza are of no good. They cannot benefit, they cannot harm. Benefit is from Allah, harm is from Allah, health is from Allah, sickness is from Allah, poverty is from Allah, wealth is from Allah. Everything is from Allah. So that's Yaqeen. The benefit, medicine, Allah puts benefit in the medicine. The disease, Allah puts harm in the disease. The disease does not have power. The medicine does not have power. The doctor cannot cure. This Yaqeen needs to enter our hearts. She made nafi and ithbat, we need to negate and speak so much about Allah that this heart believes it. By me taking this tablet is equal because it is the command of Allah. I'm fulfilling the command. Ya Allah, you put benefit in this medication. Whatever sickness I have, doesn't matter whether I'm sick or I'm not sick. If my time for death is written, I will die at that time. Nobody can move it forward, nobody can move it backward. Everything is in Allah's control. Dawat, the power of inviting to Allah, establishing the greatness of Allah, negating everything else besides Allah. Hazrat Zinira radiallahu anha, Allah then restored her vision. Allah restored her vision. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَخْشَ اللَّهُ وَيَتَّقِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ These are the achievers. These are those that are victorious. So what do I need to do to fit this criteria? What has Allah told me to do? Am I doing that? Allah will do the rest. Allah will do the rest. On, on Khandak, Ahzab, the siege, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel with the winds. Farishtas came and that was unleashed on the Mushrikeen. When Nabi alayhi salam saw Jibreel, he told Sahaba three times, Behold, it is time to rejoice. Behold, it is time to rejoice. Behold, it is time to rejoice. And then the winds that came tore their tents, overturned their pots, buried their carriages. It rubbed and severed the ropes of the tents and they were running about in halter skelter in confusion. And with regards to that Nusad of Allah, Allah spoke about it. إِذْ جَاءَتْكُمْ جُنُودٍ Allah's army came. فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رِيهًا وَجُنُودًا We sent such a wind, such an army. لَمْ تَرَوْهَا So we have to show Allah that we are genuine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do the rest. We have to show Allah we are genuine. Allah will sort out. Needs of dunya, needs of akhirah. As Abdullah ibn Umar once was traveling and he came across a shepherd. So he told the shepherd, Bi'na shat min hadhi al ghanam, sell us a sheep. So he said, Inha laysat li, I don't own it, I cannot, uh, I don't have the authority to sell it. It belongs to my master, Li Sayyidi. So Ibn Umar said, tell your master a wolf devoured it. He was just testing this shepherd. 
He was testing the shepherd. So the shepherd replied, فَأَيْنَ اللَّهِ فَأَيْنَ اللَّهِ Where is Allah? I can tell my master. I will, how will I answer to Allah? I will I answer to Allah. فَبَكَى إِبْنُ عَمَرْ And he started crying profusely. And he was repeating these words, فَأَيْنَ اللَّهِ ثُمْ فَأَيْنَ اللَّهِ where is Allah? Wow, what a beautiful answer. Then he went to the master. He bought the slave. He freed the slave. And he bought the sheep and he gave it as a gift. He gave it as a gift. This shepherd was truthful to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found a way. So, how obeying Allah, we get Allah's help. On the contrary, if we don't obey Allah, we will lose Allah's help. Allah's justice system comes around. Kama to deen to dan, as you do, so will be done upon you. So shall you reap. That's the consequences. They say there was once a person who was working in a butcher and he saw a woman on the street stabbed with a knife. So as he was traveling to his workplace, he came across a lady on the street, stabbed with a knife. He got out of his car and he ran to her. As he got there, trying to help her, people came around and saw, and they accused him of killing her. So the police came and they were called and they arrested him. And uh, when they interrogated him, فَأَخَذَ يَحْلِفُ لَهُمْ بِاللَّهِ أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ الَّذِي قَتَلَهَا I had nothing to do with it. I did not kill her. So he took oaths, but the police did not believe him and they imprisoned him. And they did an investigation and they concluded the court case. The judge made a decision that he has to be executed. He is guilty. So the day of execution came, so he told the people, an minni kalam. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. That I used to work before I was a sailor, I had boats. So before opening the butcher, I was in the Euphrates River and I should take people from bank to bank. I should have a, a, a taxi service, which I provided for people. One day, Rakibat Imra'atun Jamilatun, a beautiful woman embarked. Qad a'ajabatni, and I was amazed at her, at her beauty. Allah is endowed her with beauty. Fadhabtu, and I went after she disembarked, I followed her. And I went to propose to her, but she rejected me. So a year later passed and this woman also mounted my boat and she had a baby. So I tried to, to, to get close to her, but she refused. I tried again and again and every time she blocked me and I threatened her with her child. So I told her that if you do not fulfill my desire, then I will harm your child. She didn't listen. So he said, I put the child in the water. He was screaming and wailing and crying. She stayed on her stance. She never compromised. And she said, that ardha wa sharafa az alayha min waladiha. My honor, my chastity is more important than even my child. I became very upset, and as I kept the child in the water, he was screaming and he passed away. I threw the child in the water. I realized there'll be consequences. I decided to kill the mother. I sold the boat. I opened up the butcher. Waha ana, waha ana. Yeah, I am standing before you. 
and I'm facing the consequences of my action. Amma al-qatil, as for the real killer, fabhathu anhu, go find the real killer, but the punishment I'm facing, I deserve it. I deserve it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of realizing the reality of inculcating taqwa and it be a means of drawing Allah's help and to stay away from guna. The amal for today is ليس الغنى عن كثرة العرض ولكن الغنى غنى النفس To be contented with what Allah has given you No matter what it is, be contented. Why? Because possessions are not having Wealth is not having a lot of possessions. A rich person, a wealthy person is not considered one who has a lot of possessions. But true wealth is a person who is wealthy in the soul.